Hey everyone, back tonight with uh, Ezekiel chapter 42 is where I talked about last time. It talks about the temple's chambers. That's what it says, chapter 42 of uh, Ezekiel says this. Then he led me out into the, into the outer court towards the north, and he brought me to the chambers that were, that were opposite, the separate yard and opposite of the, of the building on the north. The length of the building, whose door faced north, was a hundred cubits, and the breadth fifty cubits. Facing facing the twenty cubits that belonged to the inner court, and facing the pavement that belonged to the outer court, was was a uh, was gallery against gallery in three stories. So this thing, this temple, like three stories, was very massive. Um, and uh, of course, God is showing Ezekiel all of this. Then before the chambers was a passage inward, ten cubits wide, and a hundred cubits long, and their doors were on the north. Now the other, now the upper chambers were narrower, for the galleries took more away from them than from the lower and middle chambers of the building. For they were in the, uh, in the for they were in the three stories, and they had no pillars like the pillars of the courts. Thus the upper chambers were set back from the ground, more than the lower and the middle ones. And there was a sm and there was a wall outside parallel to the chambers towards the outer court, opposite the chambers fifty cubits long. For the chambers on the outer court were fifty cubits long, while those opposite the nave were a hundred cubits long. Below these chambers were an entrance on the east side as one enters from the inner court. And the thickness of the wall of the court on the south also opposite the yard and opposite the building that were chambers with the passage in front of them. They were similar to the chambers in the north on, of the same length and breadth, with the same exits and arrangements and doors, as were the entrances of the chambers on the south. There was an entrance at the beginning of the, of the passage, the passage before the, uh, the corresponding wall on the east, as one enters, enters them. Then he said to me, The north chambers and the south chambers opposite the yard are, are the holy chambers, where the priests who approach the Lord shall eat, the most holy offerings. There they shall put the most most holy offerings, the grain offering, the sin offering, and the guilt offering for the place is holy. When the priests enter the holy enter the holy place, they shall not go out out of it into the into the outer court without laying their uh, the garments in which they minister for these are holy. So they walk inside this holy inside the holy place that's considered holy because um, the God is there. Where they sacrifice um, their offerings to God because of their sin, and that's how God forgave them in the Old Testament. Now, now these are the, you know now in the New Testament days um, we're saved uh, through Christ and Christ alone, not by animal sacrifices. But Old Testament that's how they did it. They, that's how they did it. So when they walked into the holy place to sacrifice to God, they couldn't go back to the outer and the outer entrance. So they had to uh, you know wait. Per se, they had to. Uh, it says right here, you know, when the priest entered the, entered the holy place, they shall not go out of it into the outer court without laying their garments in which they minister, for these are holy. So they had so they had had to lay their garments there in that in that uh, holy temple, because you know, because they because they were in the presence of God and they were counted as holy. Um, so they had to leave their garments there, um, you know, and walk out of there with, uh, without their garments on, pretty much. Because they were considered holy, because they were they were um, they were you know in the presence of God, and um, they laid their garments there so they could go out um, to the people. So anyway, that's a uh, uh, verse fourteen it says, "And the priest entered the holy the holy place, they shall not go out into the in, out of it into the outer court without laying their." Uh, garments in which they minister for these are holy. They shall put on the other garments before they go near to, before they go near to that which is for the people. So like I said, they couldn't leave their garments there. Um, they couldn't, you know, their holy garments, they couldn't carry that outside to the to where the people were at. They had their holy garments there inside the temple, and they had to put on new garments to go out to where the people were at. Now, when he had finished measuring the interior of the temple area, he led me out by the gate that faced east and measured the temple area all around. He measured the east side with a measuring reed, 500 cubits by the measuring reed all around. 
he measured the north side by 500 cubits by the measuring read all around. He measured the south side 500 cubits by the measuring read. Then he turned to the west side and measured 500 cubits by the measuring read. He measured it on all four sides. He had all around it 500 cubits long, 500 cubits broad to make to make a separation between the holy and the common. So God, in a sense, whenever the temple was built, um, he wanted, you know. He wanted to uh, be holy. Um, he wanted to be, I'm trying to think of the word to say. He wanted to be, um, you know, separate, I guess, from the people because he's holy. And um, and no one could really enter, enter his presence unless they have permission from him, all like the priest did. So, so he was, so, so God's holy, as we know. There's no sin in God. He's holy. He's perfect. Um, and man who is sinful can't come to God unless God acts first, um, especially through salvation. Um, we can't be counted as righteous until God Himself saves us, breaks us. You know, He He, he breaks our hearts. He 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 just like crushes our spirit, which then leads us to repent of our sins and live and live our lives for Him. Because then we start seeing the way God sees. We start, you know, we start loving things that are holy, and we start hating things that are sinful. So we totally. So when you're saved, you're totally. You're different. You're not the same person as you were. Um, the things you want, the sins that you once loved doing, you now hate. And um, and you start loving the things of God. That's what's like to be saved. Is you know, it's just when God saves you, it's like you, your whole. Um, perplexity on life changes. The things you once, you know, the sins that you once hated, not um, the sins that you uh, once uh, loved. As I'm trying to say, you you, you hate now, and and uh, you start you know you start hating sin, and you start loving God. It's like it's like it's like you you're totally changed forever when God saves you. So. Um, yeah, so that's what I was talking about in verse in, ver, in verse uh, I mean in chapter forty uh, two, it talks about um that, you know in verse twenty he measured on four sides it had a wall around it five hundred cubits long five hundred cubits broad, makes separation between the holy and the common because God wanted him separate from from the people because he's holy, and sinful people sin cannot in, cannot be in the presence of God, um because he's perfect he's holy and all the way that us sinners can come to God, is by God acting up. Or is God adding upon us first by saving us, by repenting, you know, by us repenting of our sins and us turning back to Him? You know, God has God has to totally change your heart around for you to be saved. You know, salvation isn't salvation. You know, it's not just walk down the aisle. You know, and you get you know, and you pray a little prayer, and that's it. It's not salvation. It's good to pray. It's good to do those things. It's good to pray. It's good to do those things. But salvation is when God Himself chooses to save you. He uh, you know, He saves you. He convicts you of your sins, which then leads you to repent and live your life for Him. And the sins that you once loved doing, now you hate, and, and you start loving the things of God. That's salvation. That's how God saves us. It's through Christ, through through the through the blood of Christ, that forgives us of our sins. So that's uh, that's again that's uh, and that's only it's and that's only way we can be saved is through Christ. No one else can save us. Only God Himself can through Christ. So Amen. So that's forty two, and I'll be back with forty three here shortly.